good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's Committee of the Whole meeting. Uh, this meeting is called to order. Let the record show that all the aldermen, save for Alderman Rodecki, are present this evening, as are dozens of boxes of Girl Scout cookies. I've got five boxes of thin mints if anyone's interested. Yes, they are. <laughs> it's a buck a sleeve, man. Buck a sleeve. That's true, 250 a sleeve. Our first order of business, ladies and gentlemen, is to invite an uh, extraordinary young man to the podium to recognize him for some pretty cool stuff. You may all know him from articles in the Kane County Chronicle, coverage on WGN television. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome Miguel Sorato to the podium. Mr. Sorato, how are you, sir? Good. Good. Now, I understand that you have some prepared remarks this evening. Yeah. And we'd like to introduce the guests who are with you tonight? Yes, please. And who are these guests? Um, my godfather, my mom, my sister, and my aunt, and my dad. Awesome. And your dad's covering this live, isn't he? Yes. Wait, Fantastic. Wait, are you? <laughs> <laughs> As are we, yeah. We warned Miguel about the television cameras. He seems completely uninhibited by those, so life is good. Yeah. The floor is yours, sir. Good evening, Mayor Burns and the City Council members. My name is Miguel Serrato, and I'm in four a fourth grader at Harrison Street Elementary School. I want to thank you for inviting me here to speak about my fun experience on American Jewelry Jr. On March of 2018, I started training at Ultimate Ninjas Naperville. That spring, they posted on a Facebook about a casting for a kids version of American Ninja Warrior. My mom, dad, and aunt and godfather helped me complete the application and videos needed to enter. In June, I got my call and I was chosen to be on American Ninja Warrior Jr. On 192 kids from ages 9 to 14 were picked to compete. My family and I flew to Los Angeles for taping. While on the trip, I got to meet a few pros from the show. Najee Richardson, Kevin Bolt, and Barclay Stockett were some of the mentors that helped us kids review the obstacles and figure out how to beat them. I got to meet some really cool kids while taping. One kid that was on American Ninja Warrior Jr. with me was Vaughn Stevens, the Rhino Ninja. He raises money to save the rhinos by saving his t-shirts online, by selling his t-shirts online. The hosts of American Ninja Warrior Jr. are Matt Eisman and Akbar Bajabi Amilo. They also host the adult show, adult show. For the kids' version, they had Olympic gold gymnast Lori Hernandez be the sideline host. The, the kids in the adult show have the same obstacles, but they are made easier for, the kid, for kids. My favorite obstacle from the show is called the spin cycle. The spin cycle is a set of three hanging baskets that you have to swing and jump only using your arms. My favorite thing about, thing about the whole experience is meeting new friends and pushing each other to be great ninjas. Last week, I competed in the National Ninja League World, Champions in World Championship in Hartford, Connecticut. I was able to see all my friends from the show and cheer them on while they ran the competition. Throughout, throughout Ninja, I have inspired my parents to work out and eat better so we can do Ninja together. Hold my, on, wait a <laughs> You've inspired mom and dad to work out and eat better? Yeah. Mom and dad, how's it going? 25 pounds down. Hey, look at that. <laughs> dad? I'm one belt notch. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. <laughs> That's good. Well done, Miguel. My episode is scheduled to air on Saturday, March 30th at 6 p.m. on Universal Kids. I hope you tune in to watch. Wow. Really well done. Extraordinary. So, Miguel, my friend, you're in fourth grade. Yeah. And you told me earlier you have a birthday coming up as well. Yeah. March 10th is your birthday. Yeah. And you're having a party? Yeah. And where's that party being held? My ninja place. In Naperville? Yeah. And we're all invited? 
Sure. If we pay our own way. <laughs> bring the sneakers. Oh boy. Oh boy. So you're flying out to Los Angeles. Yeah. And you're competing. I already did. Correct. But you're competing in Los Angeles. Yes. So what's that like? You you obviously did you compete the day you flew out or did you stay the night then compete the next day? Oh, wow. So you were there several days ahead of time. Yeah. Did you see all the good things you wanted to see? Yeah. Yeah? Besides competing, what was the coolest thing in L.A.? Mm. Probably. Oh, yeah. Um, um, being on the, a boat, and I got to drive the boat. <laughs> really? Were there other people on the boat? <laughs> no. No? Well, that's even there better. Was a, there was another person that was like... Um, like making the bow move. The bow. Oh, that's pretty cool, man. And then Hartford, Connecticut for the World Championships. Yeah. Now, it's my understanding that you can't talk about what transpired at the filming because, of course, it hasn't been broadcast yet. Yeah. Okay. March 30th is a pretty cool day then, isn't it? Yeah. So everyone's going to be gathered in Geneva and elsewhere to watch you compete on TV. Yeah. Uh, March 30th is a pretty cool date in history, too. Do you know what happened on March 30th? No. In history over the years? No. Anybody want to guess? I'm going to tell you. Miguel, are you ready for this? Yeah. In 1867, on March 30th, your mom and dad may remember this. <laughs> the United States bought Alaska for $7,200,000, which equates to two cents per acre. That's a good buy. It's cheaper than the Girl Scout cookies. In 1822, Florida became a territory before it was a state. Do you know that? On March 30th. No. In 1939, DC Comics, do you know what the comic books are? Introduced Batman to the world on March 30th. In 1964, guess what television show first appeared on NBC? Wait, what? Actually, what a game you? show. Get what game show? Anyone know? 1964. Jeopardy? Very good. <laughs> it is Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta do better Google searches. Yeah. Than for... How did you know that? Proper that was a guess. Is, yeah, the proper answer is what is the. Yes, yeah, right. Thank you, Godfather. And in 1970, Miguel. What song hit number one on the charts? 1970? <laughs> thriller? No. no, not Thriller. Good guess, though. His original name, his, his birth name was Dutchendorf. Does that give anyone a hint? John Denver's Sunshine on My Shoulder, what? which is why the 70s are often forgotten about. <laughs> and guess what else is going to happen on March 30th? What other major significant event? Any idea? No. Well, guess what? On March 30th, 2019, my colleagues in the city council and I are declaring it Miguel Serrato Day in the city of Geneva. Wow. Isn't that cool? <laughs> now I've got a certificate for you. May I present this to you? Thank you. You're, I'd like to read what it says. It says, the city of Geneva is proud to recognize Miguel Serrato on his 2019 appearance on American Ninja Warrior Junior. The city is proud to recognize Miguel and his talents as a positive ambassador for our community. Therefore, by the power vested in me as mayor of Geneva, I hereby proclaim Saturday, March 30th, 2019, as Miguel Serrato Day in the city of Geneva. Wow. You know what that means, don't you? No. <laughs> Anything you want is free, man. <laughs> Do you believe me? No. <laughs> smart young man. Smart guy, man. Smart young man. May I get a picture with you? Yeah. That is awesome. You know, let's do some. Yeah, yeah, let's do some flips or something. I can't do a flip. Neither can I. I'm close to doing. A <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh my gosh. So Miguel, where is the, are you going to be at home watching all this on March 30th? No, I'm going to be at my gym. Oh, so it's a big party at the gym. Yeah. Same place where your birthday is being held. Yeah. Are we invited? <laughs> yes again. <laughs> yes again. <laughs> Miguel, you're a very impressive young man. Yes. Thank you very much. It's very exciting, man. So on March 30th, have your mom text me. We'll go out and get it whatever you want, okay? Just say yes. yes. Okay, good job. Now, if the Serratos need to leave, we understand that completely. We're going to continue on with business. Miguel, thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll see you on your birthday. And now it's time for Ninja to go bed. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ninja night-night time. <laughs> thank you very much. Awesome, isn't it? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, item three is to approve the regular meeting minutes for January 28th, 2019, and special meeting minutes of February 4th, 2019. So moved. Second, or excuse me, a motion by Alderman Bruno. Second. Sir, second by Alderman Marks. All in favor of approving the minutes as stated, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <laughs> item three passes with nine affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and one absent. Uh, we skip item 4A, of course, so 4B is to recommend draft resolution authorizing the city administrator to purchase 10 saddle tank retrofit kits for snow removal equipment from Henderson Products Incorporated in the amount of $53,027.25. Is there a motion? Motion by Marks. Seconded by Clemens. City Administrator Dawkins will provide a brief overview. Okay. As stated, this resolution would authorize the purchase of retrofit kits for snow removal equipment. The addition of a saddle tank on the trucks will enable staff to pre-wet and apply liquid de-icing chemicals to the salt while on the truck, thus reducing the amount of salt used and the time it takes for the salt to become effective. It also reduces the city's reliance on purchasing pre-mixed salt and reducing the cost of bulk salt purchases. And as we know, we've used a lot of that this year. Uh, this expense is included in the fiscal year 20 budget, so these are future purchases, but a lot of times these items take time to get, so we won't take delivery till after May 1st. Uh, we have Nate Landers with us this evening, as well as Rich Babica, if there's any additional questions. Any questions or comments for either of the gentlemen? Seeing none, hearing none, all in favor of item 4B, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? 4B passes with nine affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and one absent. Item 4C is to recommend draft resolution authorizing the city administrator to purchase a 2020 Peterbilt Model 348 single axle dump and snowplow from JX Truck Center through Sourcewell in the amount of $186,147. So moved. Motion by Bruno. Second. Seconded by McGowan. City Administrator Dawkins will provide a brief summary. Uh, so the fiscal year 20 capital equipment budget provides for the purchase of a dump truck as replacement for a year 2000 truck. Delivery of the truck would not occur till fiscal year 20, but again, there's a long lead time. Um, in your packet, you saw all of the service requests. Maybe in the future, we'll give you a summary instead of 400 pages, but 
again, you saw that information. We have uh, Nate and Rich are here if you have any additional questions. Questions for either Mr. Landers or Mr. Bavica. Alderman Swanson. The, uh, the total amount for 186147 includes something called floor plan interest for $1,480. And it's my understanding that uh, we will not incur this expense if we pay the invoice on time. So my question is, do we need to authorize the total amount, including that, or should we authorize what we intend to pay? Because that would provide incentive to pay it on time, and if we fail to do so, then uh, you could come back to the city council for approval for that additional amount. So I, I would uh, motion to modify the, uh, the total amount that we're authorizing to $184,667, which excludes that 1480 um, interest expense that we uh, have no intention of paying. There is a motion on the floor to amend the amount to pay per Alderman Swanson's request. Is there a second to that motion to amend? Seconded by Alderman Maladra. Questions or comments regarding the motion to amend? On the motion to amend, motion. pardon me? Yeah, the motion. On the motion, on the main motion as amended. Correct. On the main motion as amended, everyone clear? Alderman Ruby? Okay. So just to clarify, so that is feasible to do it that way? Is yes. It, okay. All right. Then I'm all for it. Thank you. Thank you. On the motion as amended, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The motion... As amended, passes with nine affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and one absent. Thank you, Alderman Swanson. Item 4D is to recommend draft resolution authorizing execution of the 2019 French Market License Agreement with Benzedun USA to operate an open air market, excuse me, to operate an open air market on Saturday, Sundays, excuse me, on Sundays from April 14, 2019 to November 10, 2019 on the city's South 4th Street parking lot. Forgive me for the stumbling. Motion by Alderman Kilberg. Second. Second by Alderman Swanson. Questions or comments for Kathleen? But first, a summary <laughs> by City Administrator Dawkins. Okay, so for the past several years, the City Council has executed a one-year license agreement with Ben City and USA to operate the French market. The agreement, this current agreement includes the same provision as in previous years, along with some minor changes to better reflect sales tax collection practices and actual operational practices related to setup. Um, as the Mayor indicated, Kathleen Timoshenko, our Economic Development Director, is present this evening to answer any additional questions. Any questions for our Director of Economic Development? Seeing none, hearing none, all in favor of item 4D, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed, say nay. The motion passes with nine affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and one absent. Item 4E is to recommend draft resolution adopting financial policies for the city of Geneva, Illinois. I dare you to make a motion to approve this. Motion by, <laughs> motion by Alderman McGowan, seconded by Alderman Marks. Questions or comments? You want to update, yes. Madam City Administrator? So, the, um, as indicated, this is an update of the City of Geneva financial policies. They were originally adopted the first time in 2009 and updated in 2014. They're being updated in response to our budget process and a change in state statute that allows municipalities to invest in obligations of corporations for no longer than three years. Um, we've also added, which is at, the, at your spots, um, a minor change listed in the handout uh, that when you get this back next week, you'll see that actually in there. And this was upon the recommendation of Alderman Swanson, essentially requiring a written confirmation um, of all the reconciliations. Uh, so Rita Cruz was intending to be here this evening, but unfortunately she's homesick with the flu. Um, as are some of our other staff this week. So Ben or myself are happy to answer any questions you may have. Questions from Mr. McCready or Ms. Dawkins? Oh, Alderman Clements. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, under the investment policies uh, section um, under return item four, so I noticed we're changing some wording here as well, and I just had a 
question. So our original wording is, it is the policy of the city of Geneva to invest public funds in a manner which will provide the highest investment return. Um, and we're changing that to the portfolio was designed to obtain a reasonable return. So I, I had a more intuitive understanding of what we mean by the highest possible return with the understanding that that might mean it's not a good return, but we're shooting for the highest. What do we mean by reasonable? And how are we measuring that? have an answer I'm trying to find it first so give me a second. I'm sorry it's on page 534 the, thank you that yep, sorry uh, and I understand that's all within the constraints of what we can do and you know I, I, I realize I mean that. and I think that's it I think it's just but, it's saying rather than setting expectations too high we're saying we're gonna be reasonable we're gonna base it on X and Y and and hope you know hope we get the best but then what we, I feel like we were saying we were going for the best before and now we're changing it to reasonable. I, you know, and in my profession, and, you know, obviously this is what I do too and I'm always shooting for the best and I fail at that plenty. Um, but the stated objective is still to get the best possible return. But so I think we're also, to, what we're saying now is we're also going to weigh the risk of that as opposed to just going for the highest. Well, but that was in here before because we also struck out with the maximum security while meeting the daily cash flow, et cetera, et cetera. And now we're changing it to taking into account the city's investment risk constraints. Risk constraints. You could so still put the, the taking into account the city's investment risk constraints while you have the highest investment uh, return possible. I don't know. I'm yeah, just trying to figure out how to measure. I, could, I intuitively understood the best return possible, but not reasonable. Reasonable just is so vague. But, it might just be because I'm being a stickler from what I do. And, you know, and that's what I, I mean, again, these are the council's policies that they adopt. So if you have. Now, that, that, was, that was my prefer. statement and my, my question and my statement. You know, that, that's just my piece there. Would so. you like to amend the language, Alderman Clemens, or would you like to perhaps give seven days for Rita and others to consider your comments and perhaps return with modified language? Or? Yeah, I'm happy to have people well, you consider can, it. Sure. Yeah, okay. if you want to speak so could I, could I just offer a. Yeah, Alderman Malandra, and then I'm going to turn over to the city attorney. So highest, highest and best return, if, if we post six and somebody shows up with a, a funder and investment that posted seven, obviously we didn't get the highest. We did the best we felt we reasonably could without necessarily hitting the highest. So I think that by changing from highest, which could be quantified, to reasonable, which is more subjective, it gives us a little bit of leeway. One possible explanation. I don't know. I didn't write. No, that makes that makes sense. But you can still shoot for the highest and miss it right. in your policy. So, Mr. City Attorney, I, uh, Alderman, I'd be happy to work with you on any language. I think that the, the state statute has prescriptions with respect to the, obviously using the reasonable, prudent person standard. Obviously, highest return is always sought but it was yep. it's within legal constraints so I'm happy to work with some language with you so that it meets obviously the city's gold goals right. and still stays within the the legal constrictors that are required absolutely I just want to get the appearance that we're like lowering our bar and trying to you know what I mean that is absolutely yep. not the intent okay. um, so I'm happy to work with you on that language thank you so Mr. City Attorney should we um, advance this motion as written or with a caveat that it'll be no, we'll, we'll revise it. Okay, we, so. we can advance it and we can work with uh, some language make sure all the council gets it in advance and obviously if it's not ready for prime time we can we can pass on it but if if there's a reasonable um, or I guess folks that think it works we can vote on it then and we won't put it on the consent it'll be on is everyone active. comfortable with that this will not appear on the consent irrespective of the vote tonight so we will advance this with the knowledge that it'll be reworded and then for our consideration next week any questions? All in favor of that direction, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Item 4E advances with nine affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and one absent. We are, or we have rather, arrived at new business and public comment. Anyone joining us this evening wish to ask any questions or present any opinions? Or now is the chance. From the dais. Nothing? Well, folks, next Sunday, March the 3rd, it's scheduled to be 15 degrees outside. I, however, will be participating in the Special Olympics Polar Plunge 
in beautiful Yorkville, Illinois. Yes. So, I've enjoyed working with all of you. <laughs> so on the off chance things go south, you'll know. So, and the off chance you see some things on social media, what have you. That's what I'll be doing on that beautiful Sunday. So, <laughs> with, and I'll be signing up with our police officers and our firefighters from Geneva who are also participating, so. That'd be nice, yeah, <laughs> that'd be a deal. If there's nothing else, ladies and gentlemen, a motion to adjourn would be in order. Motion by Alderman Marks. Second. Seconded by Alderman Bruno. All in favor of adjourning this meeting, please say aye. Aye. The meeting is adjourned, folks.